Greetings YouTubers, Atari Leaf here with a closer look video. Today we're going to look at the Jack Specific Millennium Falcon plug and play. Now you remember that feeling you had when you first came out of the Phantom Menace? As if someone had ripped out your heart and completely destroyed Star Wars? That's kind of like what this is. This is four Star Wars games on a little handheld plug and play. The first one we have is Lightsaber Duel. You can play as either Luke Skywalker, Darth Vader, Obi-Wan Kenobi, or the Emperor. But you'll only be able to play as Luke when you first start out. The others have to be unlocked. Because obviously you're going to want to spend a lot of time playing this game to unlock all those characters. If you can't detect my sarcasm, run out right now and go hide somewhere. Because I don't want to talk to you. This is awful. It's basically just button mashing. And why is Luke Skywalker fighting and trying to kill Obi-Wan Kenobi, his mentor? A father-like figure to him. This is just insane. Basically, there are two buttons to jump and attack, and you can use a combination to block as well. They don't really do anything. Like I said, you basically just are going to mash the buttons until you defeat your enemy or you're defeated. There's not really much else to say. This is easily the worst of the four games on this compilation. Okay, next we have Red Leader. Now, this one actually isn't too bad. This is kind of like 1941, 1942 in the arcades. Maybe even Xevious. Your A button will shoot your lasers and the B button will shoot bombs. The bombs will only be effective later on when you're over top of a Star Destroyer. There are different power-ups, as you can see. I didn't know X-Wings had these little special pods that followed them around and gave them extra shots, but hey. Who am I to write, rewrite Star Wars history? Only George Lucas can do that. Remember, Greedo shoots first. But no, seriously, this is, this is actually a pretty decent one. I had a good time playing Red Leader. It's a decent shoot-em-up, like I said, like 1941 or 1942. Very good. Then here you get above the Star Destroyer, you can start using the bombs on the gun turrets on the Star Destroyer. It's actually fairly difficult, too. Uh, I found a hard time... There, there's a lot coming at you, so I had a hard time uh, avoiding everything. And it's a little hard to see the green uh, bullets from the TIE Fighters and so forth. And there's a lot coming at you there. But Red Leader, I would say definitely, by far, the best game on this compilation. Okay, next we have Assault on Hoth. This one was probably designed for little kids. Remember that game Blip? It was an old handheld electronic game called Blip. And what you basically had to do was uh, watch the light as it came across and you had to press the right button to send it back to the other side. This is kind of like that. There are three turrets, so you move the joystick to move your little man from turret to turret, firing uh, as stormtroopers and probe droids and chicken walkers and snow walkers come at you in a straight line directly towards you. The A button shoots your lasers and the B button acts like a shield that comes up to protect your turret. Although realistically, even if a turret is destroyed, it's not hard to get it back. As soon as the turret's destroyed, immediately a rebel soldier runs over and repairs it. So, you've got it there. And apparently all it takes to blow up a snow walker is just shoot it a few dozen, a few times in the knees and it'll fall down. Wasn't that easy in the movie. Finally, we have the Battle of Endor. Battle of Endor, not very good either. There are three different sections. I'm only going to show you the first. The first one, your Leia on the snowspeeder. There's also Chewbacca trying to destroy the uh, uh, shield generator and Lando trying to blow up the Death Star. This is just the first part. I couldn't be bothered going through the second parts, but here you are. Leia flying through or riding through Endor on the speeder bike. And of course you have to avoid the trees and the stormtroopers on their speeder bikes. Not really much to say, not much to it. Uh, I will say that the control for the game itself works fine. The joystick that sticks out of the top of the Millennium Falcon, very well built. Seems to work very well. The buttons are sturdy. The 
the build of the actual device works well. It's just too bad that the games inside aren't that great. But like I said, the Red Leader, that one was pretty good. That alone will make this game worth picking up. And if you see it in a thrift store for a couple of bucks, sure, why not pick it up? But you're not going to play this for a long period of time. Well, this is Atari Leaf with another Closer Look review, the Millennium Falcon Jack Specific Plug and Play. Thanks for watching, folks, and may the Force be with you.